It was unbearably sad and totally preventable, if only his parents knew. At just 32 days old, baby Riley Hughes succumbed to a fatal bout of whooping cough. What made his death so much worse for his parents, Greg and Catherine, is that a simple vaccine could have saved Riley's life. It's hard to comprehend how you would recover from such a tragedy, but the Hughes were determined some good would come from Riley's death. So began a tireless campaign to ensure that no other Australian family would suffer the same loss. And as Rani Sadler reports, that's not all they've achieved. <laughs> Olivia Hughes has waited her whole life to be a big sister. And today is the day she'll get to meet the baby girl who's just arrived. Do you want to give her a kiss just there? Oh, she's heavy, isn't she? It's not the first time Olivia's been a big sister. Does she look like Friday at all, do you think? Riley is the little brother Olivia welcomed last year. Her family made headlines after Riley died from whooping cough 32 days after he was born. The tragic death of my four-week-old son to whooping cough has devastated my family and I. All these things go through your mind, you know, like uh, babies don't die in this country from a cough and why my baby... <laughs> I'm not a bad parent, I'm not a bad person. What did I do to deserve this? What Greg and Catherine did after Riley's death is what makes their story extraordinary. They're driving changes that are protecting thousands of newborns across Australia, including their new baby daughter, Lucy Grace. I thought they were very brave. I think it was quite a outstanding what they did so effectively so quickly in raising public awareness and then rallying people behind the idea of improving the vaccination rate of pregnant women i thought that was fantastic yeah that's why we're here trying to tell everyone about how important it is the partnership that's saving lives today began with a teenage romance 11 years ago we met when i just finished high school i was um 18 and um, it was the first summer since high school and met Greg and fell in love really quickly. In 2011, Catherine gave birth to daughter Olivia. Two and a half years later, Olivia was the flower girl at their wedding. Pretty quickly we were like, okay, let's, you know, try for another baby. And so three months later I had a pregnancy test and, and we were pregnant. When did you find out that you were having a little boy? I think it was about 20 weeks into the pregnancy and we were stoked, you know, like everyone wants that little boy, little girl, got the, the full house. So, yeah, we, we, it was everything we'd wanted, really. Catherine's pregnancy went without a hitch and on the 13th of February last year, Riley was born. He was a healthy 3.65 kilos and instantly won over his big sister, Olivia. She liked to sing to him. Yes, lots of Taylor Swift. And just those incredible eyes. I could stare into them all day. I couldn't describe the feeling of just holding him. It was like I felt complete when I had him, so it was amazing. Life seemed complete. Then, at three weeks, Riley got what seemed like a cold. He was about three weeks old. And then a couple of days later, he developed a really tiny cough. And I even remember thinking, oh, that kind of sounded cute. Like it was just the most tiny little cough. The cough continued for a few days. They took him to hospital, thinking they were probably being a bit overcautious. So at that point, you thought, you know, take him in for a little while, he'll be fine. Yeah, that's yeah. it. But Riley was diagnosed with whooping cough, a highly contagious bacterial infection which quickly developed into pneumonia. It all happened so fast that even when I got the call and said, oh, he's going to ICU, I mean, the doctors came and spoke to us and said, oh, you're in for a long journey here. You, you've probably got two or three months in, in hospital ahead of you. 
His condition deteriorated rapidly. Rather than months, the family had hours. They were asked if they'd like to baptise Riley, and in disbelief, they agreed. They took him off the oscillator machine and his skin felt so hot. And I remember just asking the doctor, you know, is there any chance at all, like any chance? And I remember the doctor was in tears and said there was no chance that he would survive. And Greg was next to me holding him as well. And then we just talked to him for a while and watched the monitor sort of, the heartbeat on the monitor slow down. And it kept slowing down and then it stopped. And he was gone. It's just the worst day of my life. Five days after Riley was admitted to hospital, he died. Olivia decorated her baby brother's casket. I had to carry his coffin to the car, and that was the last time I held him at all. And that was when I said goodbye and when I let him go, and that's something that I I hold really, really close because it just ruins me. Catherine and Greg searched for answers and were shocked to find that Riley could have been saved if Catherine had been offered a whooping cough vaccination in the third trimester of her pregnancy. We discovered that the UK, USA, even New Zealand and Belgium, that would all been offering all their pregnant mums these free whooping cough vaccinations during pregnancy. And even Queensland, if I'd lived in Queensland when I was pregnant with Riley, I would have been offered it. But no other states had implemented these programs. Whooping cough is almost entirely preventable with vaccination but babies aren't old enough to be immunised until eight weeks. Now, how dangerous is what we're looking at here? Well, whooping cough is probably the most transmissible bacterium that affects children today. One child could infect 10 others on average, and those 10 could infect 100. Professor Robert Boy is one of Australia's leading researchers into infectious diseases. We can get literally tens of thousands of cases when there's an outbreak, but there used to be hundreds of thousands of cases before we had vaccination. Despite their pain, they decided to go public, demanding the West Australian government immediately make available vaccines to every pregnant woman. We both felt that in a country like Australia, children shouldn't be dying the way that Riley died. There's no excuse for a baby to die from a vaccine-preventable disease. They took their campaign to social media, launching a Facebook page to warn other parents. We decided to go public, which was probably the scariest thing, I think. This one's lovely. I was always unsure about vaccines. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I'll fully immunise my six-month-old daughter in memory of your son. But along with the support, they were targeted with abusive messages by those opposed to immunisation. Bullshit the vaccine works. Stop the lies, Hughes family. Kath Hughes is an attention seeker. This lady is nuts. Greg and Kath Hughes are disgraceful, exploiting the death of their child to push vaccinations. The hate and vitriol that Kath in particular received are just like some of the inboxes about, you know, you're, you're a baby killer or a child killer and you've got the deaths of thousands of babies on your conscience and, and I'm just going, that's unreal. But Greg and Catherine's brave campaign for change worked. The death of a four-week-old baby boy has prompted major changes in our health system. The West Australian government made whooping cough vaccines available to every pregnant woman but their work wasn't done. 
Riley's death shouldn't have happened. We think whooping cough is a disease that just shouldn't exist in Australia in 2015. They broadened their campaign, calling for change across the whole country and spent weekends at baby expos spreading their message and offering free vaccinations. Better safe than sorry. You've done it great. Oh, thank you. By the end of last year, every state and territory had introduced free whooping cough vaccinations for pregnant mums. Tyler's advocacy was... Catherine was named WA's Young Australian of the Year. This award is dedicated to my beautiful son, Riley. How many lives do you think would have been saved as a result of this change in policy? Oh, we could have saved at least a dozen babies from severe, life-threatening or deadly whooping cough. But Catherine and Greg's most important project was to make Olivia a big sister again. And late last year, they were able to deliver the news she'd been hoping for. Guess what? What? Mummy's going to have another baby. Real? Real. Real. Mummy's got a, a little, little, little baby in her tummy. And now? She's... Yeah. Wow. Oh. oh, wow. Look at that. Look at her nose and her eyes and her mouth. Beautiful. That's what you were in mum's yeah, tummy, too. <laughs> so nervous. And I barely slept Thanks. last night. How are you feeling? So I have to say, I'm absolutely bricking it. And I've had about two hours sleep. I feel atrocious, but I'm excited. Let's do this. Just a couple of hours until we meet baby. <laughs> Lucy Grace Hughes was born at 9.35 a.m. on August the 4th, weighing 3.9 kilos. She's beautiful. Congratulations. <laughs> Feeling good. Yeah. Feeling really good. Just relieved. How much does it mean to you having this hope now after everything you've been through? It makes me think that maybe the world isn't such a horrible place that it's, you know, been for us for the last year and a half. This time, Catherine was given the whooping cough vaccine while pregnant, and she's made sure everyone who visits, including us, has also had the jab. <laughs> Her safety from whooping cough is, is Riley's legacy, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, you know, like, I guess for us, we're still going to be a bit paranoid about it, but... But she's born protected. We know that she's, you know, we've given her the best protection we can until she's old enough to be vaccinated herself. Do you remember how Riley used to do that? If you put your finger in his hand, he used to go squeeze really tight. The Hughes have brought little Lucy Grace home. Oh, Lucy Grace Hughes, hi, yeah, no. I'm just so excited to actually get that chance again and, and I guess knowing that we've had that booster this time around and, and this baby's got that protection that no. whooping cough, we've ticked that one off and now I'll, uh, I'll wrap her in cotton wool until she's about 21, I think. Why don't we head outside and see if we can see Riley's star? Yeah! And Riley is never far from their thoughts. The family had a star named in his honour. So when Olivia wants to speak to her little brother... I think he's looking down at her. She just has to look up to the sky. Just up there. <gasps> And we're pleased to report both mum and baby Lucy are doing just fine. If you'd like to donate to the Light for Riley Foundation, just go to their Facebook page.